I guess we might want to talk about some lore. There's a lot of cards yeah. tonight oh, to talk yes. about. Like, oh my gosh, I thought we went pretty deep last week. And there is a Last lot week we covered about so. half of the things. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So this week we're so so super brief recap. Last episode we talked about the lore primarily behind the Shadowlands, and within the Shadowlands, there's these different realms. So Shadowlands is like the realm of of the dead in World of Warcraft, and within the Shadowlands, there's like different um, areas where different people reside, and we we covered all of them but we did not do a deep dive into revendreth which is where castle nathria takes place so our cards like sire de nathria's and prince um uh Ranathal and, and some of these other cards like we're gonna do a deep dive into that tonight i'm kind of probably butchering that introduction so i'm just gonna pass it off to goliath but anyways we are All talking right. about revendreth tonight yeah yes yes revendreth uh, the realm of the uh, penitent souls, the realm of uh, redemption, of retribution, of basically uh, everybody's uh, ch last chance to be able to go to any of the other uh, infinite afterlives in the Shadowlands instead of spending eternity suffering in the Maw, which is the eternal damnation for the absolute worst of the worst, unrepentant uh, uh tyrants, criminals, warmongers, etc. So, yes, Revendreth is, uh, so here's the preface here, that a lot of the things that we're going to talk about here that happen in Revendreth sound really, really rough. Remember this with the preface that these all happen to people who have done really horrible things in general, is the way it's supposed to work, at least. Uh, we'll get into how maybe some things aren't quite the way they're supposed to work in a little bit. But uh, oh. starting things out, uh, <laughs> we are going to be uh, starting at the top and working our way down to the bottom in terms of the who is who in Revendreth. And of course, we are beginning with the star of our set, Sire Denathrius himself. Now, uh, he is the leader of Revendreth, in fact, practically the creator of Revendreth. Everything is made in his image. Um, as we mentioned last week, uh, he is one of the four eternal ones, uh, who are basically the pantheon of death that were created in... Uh, in a long time before time before time, essentially, uh, in a place called Zareth Mortis, which is like the, the forge of afterlives. And very little is known about this, but they were created in this uh, forge by this race of beings called the First Ones, who are probably responsible for the Titans too or something. Uh, so that there's a lot of mystery surrounding the origins of the these great cosmic beings and such. But uh, basically, Denathrius was created with the sole purpose of being the being who can bring about the uh, redemption uh, and absolution of souls who required it. And that is what Revendreth is all about. However, as we mentioned last week, at some unknown time, he uh, decided that he was going to deviate from that path that he was created for. Uh, and he threw in his lot with uh, the being who was previously the Arbiter, who uh, distributed souls to the afterlives, but uh, fell and was later known as Zoval the Jailer, who became the Lord of the Maw of Eternal Damnation. And uh, Denathrius is like, yeah, yeah, we'll pull our resources together, completely remake all of reality, and then death will be the only cosmic power that matters and will rule all of existence. Fantastic. That's what I want to do. Sounds um, like an average Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Denathrius uh, eventually... So he created the entire race of the Venthyr in his image. Uh, and so they are obviously kind of, you know, vampire-like inspired. It's a very Dracula aesthetic uh, that the entire Revendreth place has, which is one of the reasons I love it. It has this great, like, gothic horror-inspired vibe without actually being horrific, you it's, know? It's, it's very, like, Nosferatu. They all look like that kind of, yeah, like you said, vampire aesthetic. 
Yeah, it's it's the cool parts without the gross out freak out parts. Uh, this is what I love about it. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, we, we have, you know, they're all very classy and the very uh, generally Venthy are very aristocratic. They're divided into noble houses and such. Uh, they're with all sorts of names, like one that particularly springs to mind is House Primrose. That's actually uh, <laughs> that's actually a thing. <laughs> And uh, yes, lots of them. And so, you know, it's it's uh, it's like, you know, Victorian age, high aristocracy type of, uh, you know, diplomacy and skullduggery and uh, all those sorts of uh, intrigue type of things that happen among the Venthyr. Uh, But then there are also those who serve them, uh, some lesser uh, created races uh, who are known as the dredgers. Uh, these are creatures who are essentially, oh, uh, yes. Oh, sorry. Actually, we are getting a little ahead of ourselves. My apologies. There's one more thing to talk about first, uh, because Denathrius, before we talk about the dredgers, Denathrius actually made one other race in addition to the Venthyr. Uh, these are known as the Nathrazim, uh, and everybody here is familiar with the Nathrazim. Uh, even if you didn't know already, because uh, they are the official name of the Dreadlords, who we know as demons, but were initially created by Sire Denathrius. Denathrius, Nathrazim, it all plays together there. So we're talking and, like, like, like Malganus type. Uh, mm-hmm. okay. Oh, yes, yes. In fact, uh, as part of the plot involving uh, Denathrius in uh, World of Warcraft Shadowlands, you actually encounter Malganus. Oh, cool. Uh, like he, is, right. he is literally a character at a point in the story. Uh, so yes, they were created to be the ultimate infiltrators. Uh, Dreadlords can disguise themselves as anything and anyone. Uh, they can uh, kill your best comrade without you knowing it and take their place and mimic it perfectly learning all of your secrets and you never knew that your closest confidant had been replaced by an enemy spy wow. that's that's what they can do <laughs> wow they okay. are serious yes so we'll, we'll, so yeah. this is interesting because we you know as the set is presented it's like oh it's a murder mystery and sire denathrius has been murdered and and as it turns out and i'm sure we'll get into that more later but like He's actually not like the protagonist. He's more of like the bad guy, right? Oh, yes. Very much so. so We're going to get into all the nasty stuff that he's done. Whenever Uh-oh. Murloc Holmes finds finds the, the killer, is he going to give them like a, a medal? Like, <laughs> <laughs> good job. Thank you. <laughs> oh, baby, who knows at this point? But... uh yeah, okay. Okay, so, so we have the ruling part of the ruling body, right? Right. Yes. Yes. So uh the the rulership of the realm of Revendreth is divided uh not solely by Sire Denathrius, that he's at the top of it all, of course. Uh but there is a council of Seven beings known as the Court of Harvesters, who are in charge of managing various aspects of the Shadowlands and also in charge of extracting very specific types of sins from souls, uh, who are, as said, they're the the Court of Harvesters, they harvest. Because the way that Revendreth works is that it extracts the anima, which is the essence of a soul. Uh, it's generally formed from all of a soul's experiences, good or bad, like souls who have lived, like, you know, lives where they've, you know, seen it all and had so many experiences, made big decisions. They are just brimming with anima. More common souls like the farmer who never really uh, left town or whatever. They don't have quite as much in there because uh, it's uh, kind of a sum of experiences. And this is what keeps the Shadowlands flowing. Um and so anytime that you see, in fact, like we have in our lovely border here, the uh, all this red stuff, this is anima, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of the great way we get the, the vampire-like beings drinking red stuff without it having to be blood. Uh, so that's kind of one of the reasons it looks the way it does. But yeah, no, that's, 
That's uh, perfectly G-rated. It's just anima right there. Just this uh, this solely wisp that uh, comes out of a person when they are drained. Um, so we're going to go through uh, the... It doesn't sound memory. G-rated. That still sounds kind of <laughs> no. scary. <laughs> yeah. No Fair blood, enough. just your soul coming out. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't uh, break honestly. any guidelines. <laughs> and it can be shown in China. So it is just much scarier than blood. <laughs> there we go. All right. So we have a few of the court of harvesters, including Prince Renathal. Is he part of the court? Yeah. Oh, yes. In fact, Prince Renathal was the very first Venthyr ever created by Sire Denathrius. He is the firstborn son, the oldest brother of all Venthyr. Uh, and he is the harvester of dominion uh which means that uh he has the ability to uh control venthyr if uh, they go against their purpose and alter the fabric of the shadowlands uh the power that every member of the court of harvesters has comes from a special medallion that they have entrusted to them by sire denathrius himself infused with a portion of his own power um, of course, the, the little thing here is that uh, he can take that back whenever he wants, and any time it's uh, the power of the medallion that's used, uh, he knows everything that's going on with uh, whoever is using it. So there, there's no keeping secrets from Sire Denathrius if you are using uh, one of the medallions there. It's... And they can get passed on to someone else. So the original holder of a position in the Court of Harvesters might be long gone, and it's someone else who is filling that position. It's very it, Lord of the Rings, right? Like if they use the ring, like Sauron would know that you used mm -hmm. it and where you're at and what you're doing with it, right? That's very very much so. Actually, See, you, yes. you went Lord of the Rings. I was thinking Captain Planet. Like, <laughs> <Sir> <laughs> is like Captain Planet giving all the Lord of the Rings. That I think is much more appropriate. By our powers <laughs> combined, I am Captain Planet. Earth, wind, fire. Art, <laughs> go planet! I've never seen it. Uh, but yeah, actually, and th this is a set of seven. Uh, and yeah, so Prince Renathal is actually the leader of the rebellion against Sire Denathrius because he realized that uh, Denathrius. What didn't really have Revendreth of the Shadowlands' best interest in mind? He kind of wised up. To the fact that uh, rather than uh, extracting the anima for the good of uh, Revendreth in the Shadowlands, Denathrius was hoarding it and keeping it away from everybody else who needed it. Um, it kind of like uh, French Revolution stuff, like, you know, let them eat cake type of thing. Uh, that's kind of what uh, Denathrius is doing here. And they don't mm. even know the reason quite yet. Um, they just know that... Uh, Hey, hey, ho, ho, Denathrius has got to go. So, uh... <laughs> All right. So, uh, so Renathal attempts to uh, get some support from other members of the Court of Harvesters, and some join him and some don't for their own various reasons. Uh, so, yeah, that's Renathal and uh, the power of Dominion. Our next uh, member of the Harvesters is the Countess. She is the harvester of desire. Um, she is essentially the big party planner and socialite of Revendreth. Uh, her role is basically managing the Venthyr nobility, uh, selecting savory souls for consumption by nobles, and uh, also there's souls who particularly suffered from desire in life, like that was their big uh, sin, that they kind of fall under her jurisdiction. Uh, she essentially uh, is all about having, uh, ke keeping the elites entertained with parties and trivialities so that they don't really have time to consider, you know, massive plots to overthrow the existing order and whatnot. She's the bread and circus uh, person, basically, uh, for the elite masses. So and that yeah. makes so much sense that she gives the, the player that plays them legendary invitations mm -hmm. that then, you know, like it, it just fits with the lore so well. Yes. 
Exactly. Right? That's great. That's very clever. I like that. And she actually is rather neutral in the whole thing against uh, between Renathal and Denathrius. Um, she is more kind of a uh, a subtlety, a play both sides type of thing. Uh, but she actually eventually just uh, surrenders her medallion willingly uh, to Renathal and the player, of course, uh, because obviously we're on that side. And uh, while, while kind of officially remaining neutral, she's just like, you know, you're causing some excitement around here. It's been so dreadfully boring here in Revendreth uh, ever since uh, Renathal's little revolution got squashed. So, uh, yeah, you know, go ahead, take my battalion. I'm, I'll be entertained by what you do with it, is essentially her approach to all of that. That's great. Wow. Okay, so the the next one up is the Harvester of Envy, which is has a different name, right? This was was a little bit confusing for me, but right. So as I said, the uh, the Harvester of title is something that all of these guys had, like Renathal's Harvester of Dominion, Countess's Harvester of Desire. So this guy's title is the Harvester of Envy. The more name, which is also kind of a title about the same time uh, but he this particular character this holder of the position goes by the name the tithe lord and uh the tithe lord is let's see he is the 275th harvester to hold the position of the harvester of envy uh a lot of them don't change hands that much. As I said, Renathal is an original. Uh, he uh, He's had that position forever. But uh, something tells me that when you deal with envy, there's a lot of people who are envious to have your position. <laughs> and so that's my guess as to why it uh, changes hands so much. Um But uh, yeah, basically, uh, the Harvester of Envy oversees uh, signing sin stones to souls who come in and we're going to talk more about sin stones later but essentially they uh they're kind of a ticket at the door that you get when you're a soul that enters revendreth and needs to do a lot of atoning and whatnot so uh he's kind of in charge of the uh assigning of all that stuff uh for the new arrivals and is in charge of taking the tithes, as said, his name is the Tide Lord, uh, of Anima from the Venthyr and the Souls. Basically, he's the tax collector. Uh, <laughs> okay. And you... living up to the reputation of tax collectors, uh, this one did not join the good guys. Uh, in fact, he actually teamed up with Kel'Thuzad, uh, who was uh, having his own shenanigans over in the other realm of Maldraxxus. And uh, t they teamed up together, and uh, he gave him... Uh, so Denathrius told the Tithe Lord to give Kel'Thuzad Renathal's old amulet of the power of Dominion. So essentially, you're getting Kel'Thuzad with the power of shaping the Shadowlands. Really scary stuff. It took... Uh, powers from uh, the Revendreth Rebellion and uh, and uh, Draka and the Necrolords from Maldraxxus working together to pry that thing off of Kel'Thuzad. Wow. That's yeah. intense. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, this uh, Tithe Lord, he's, uh, he's bad news. He's, he's like every stereotype of the uh, corrupt politician and tax collector that you could imagine, essentially. Nice. Okay. Uh, in the card art on Hearthstone, he's got that giant fork. Does that have anything to do with anything? Uh, mm -hmm. that's that's more just like the uh, illustrating the decadence type of thing. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, I I have so much. You know, the lavish meals and whatnot type of thing. It's not. He doesn't like have like a magical fork that's his signature weapon or anything like that. Okay. Cool. Doesn't really matter. I'm just curious because sometimes they include that stuff. All right, uh, the next one up is the Stone Rite. Yeah. Yes. So the Stone Rite is uh, one of the oldest members to hold the uh, title of uh, a Harvester. She's not like Renathal, where she was one of the originals created, because one of the things is that for Venthyr, 
that there are the original vendor who created, but souls who have completed their redemption can also become Venthyr. They, they have, you know, some various options. They can move on to another realm, uh, but uh, becoming a Venthyr and helping to continue helping others atone is uh, something that uh, is often the best option for uh, uh, some of them, depending on the situation. And so uh, she's one of the oldest. She's only the second Venthyr to hold that title. So there was one before her, and it was, in fact, so long ago that even Renathal had forgotten that she wasn't an original. But uh, mm -hmm. a fun fact is that she was actually... Uh, but on her world, which we don't know what world she was initially from the long eons past, um, but she actually served the goddess Alun, the same one that the night elves on Azeroth serve, and uh, had the uh, title of Night Warrior uh, infused with a certain uh, kind of dark moon power that Taronda was infused with at one point in the story. And so there's actually a part in Shadowlands where uh, she is uh, kind of gathered to help Taronda handle all this Night Warrior power stuff. Oh, cool. Uh, what is but, she uh, uh, the harvester of? She yeah. is the harvester of wrath. Uh, oh, she, as in yes. wrath of air totem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, no, she not. she is the <laughs> creator of the stone legion. So uh, basically, the giant gargoyle uh, warriors who are oh. the army of Revendreth, she created all of those. And so they often refer to as the Stone Mother or uh, whatnot. And she views all of them as her children. She actually has a strong hatred for the Nath regime because uh, due to a conflict that we'll talk about in just a little bit, they ended up getting a lot of her uh, stone uh, legions killed. And so uh, she has, you know, a burning hatred for all of them. In fact, it's only when the Nath regime come back that she actually throws in her lot with Renathal because initially she was like, Nope, Denathrius is too powerful. I'm not going to throw my children to be destroyed in an unwinnable conflict. Uh, and so, yeah, she, that's why they decided to make her the shaman, because, you know, kind of like, it was the closest they could think of for one of these uh, harvesters, because she's all about, you know, earth as an element. She carves things out of stone and infuses them to life with anima. Uh, again, anima is what powers everything. It's kind of like the their gargoyles who turn into robots when you like the anima is flipping the switch that turns them on. Um, and it's... in addition to all of that, uh, she also can create uh, living weapons and uh, uses uh, wrathful souls to create both. Uh, part of her goal is uh, forcing souls to confront their violent actions or just beat them until they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically works that either you're sorry for what you've done and you want to atone, you are not sorry, and so you're tortured in some fashion until you finally are sorry. Or if you're really, really not sorry after a super long time, then you get thrown into the maw. That's kind of the way Crush. that it works there. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's super fitting that the Harvester of Wrath is just so big mad that she's like... <laughs> goaded into helping Renathal <laughs> against Denathrius. Fair enough, yes. Uh, and then we have uh, yeah, we, we still have more Harvesters. We've got the too. other three, and these ones are not in the game, at least not in Hearthstone. Right. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, so uh, first we have the Accuser, who is the one in the, the most dress-like outfit right there uh, on the left. Um, she is the harvester of pride. Uh, she extracts anima and sins through what is known as the ritual of absolution, um, connected to the uh, cathedral of absolution, by the way, um, and uh, helps to sire souls into becoming Venthyr, if that's their right path, or sends them back to the Arbiter to go on to another afterlife, or, of course, condemns the Maw if uh, that's something that 
needs to be done there is uh, she's also the one uh, who uh, helps to uh, uh, like I said there's various ways that souls are encouraged to feel some repentance if they don't initially one of those is getting sealed in solitary confinement inside crypts until they uh, you know it, it's basically the ultimate go to your room and think about <laughs> what you've done oh no yeah, Go to frankly, your crypt and think about what you've done. The accuser channels a lot of uh, disappointed disciplinary mom energy, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our next one, who is at the top there, is called the Curator. She is the Harvester of av av Avarice. And uh, she is essentially the great archivist of all of Revendreth. Uh, she is basically, like, her mind is a living archive. She remembers everything that was written on every sin stone and uh, also deals with uh, crypts and catacombs and stuff as well. But she is like the living library of Revendreth. Unfortunately, uh, she threw her lot in with Renathal, and uh, the accuser did as well. They're very much on Renathal's side. And uh, they... Um, the curator kind of got cast into the maw and it messed up her memory a bit. So it's taken her some time to, it's like she, she has to find the backup files at this point in the story in order to regain that full uh, competence that she had before. I, and I, then, have a feel, I have a feeling that if the curator was in Hearthstone, that her voice line would be the menagerie is for guests. Only. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, hey. so say not to be confused with the other curator. Yes, uh, yes. this one is not an arcane golem who, for some reason, is not considered a mech. Um, right. And yes, and then our last one, furthest on the right, is uh, a not so helpful one. Uh, this one is the harvester of bread. Uh, she is known as the fear stalker, and uh, basically, her uh, her goal is uh, to manage the animal populations in Revendreth and uh, hunt down souls to make animal extraction and other wards easier. Uh, basically, what they do in, like, the Forests of Dread is... Uh, it's basically the most dangerous game, where they take all of these horrible souls who are used to dominating and frightening other people, and they put them in the middle of big, spooky, afterlife uh, vampire forest, and have them hunted uh, until they learn fear themselves. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's it's That's pretty intense. hardcore. Um, that sounds but, like fun. <laughs> <laughs> ah. But unfortunately, she is... Well, it's fun if you're doing the hunting. Uh, but she's one of the ones who sided with Denathrius and embraced more of the corruption aspect. And so uh, she... Uh, well, we have to kill her as players, and currently there's no one else to take her place yet. Uh, so oh, yeah, that is, that's all seven of the, uh, members of the court of harvesters or as recent as those who have held such a position. Okay, cool. So and moving right along to the servant mm -hmm. races then. Yes. Now we're getting to where I was initially getting ahead of myself here with the dredgers. Um, so remember how I said that the Venthyr are kind of like the, the Victorian aristocratic elite. Mm -hmm. Dredgers are basically the cockney urchins. Like they literally, they talk like this, governor, that, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they just want to roll around. They're literally made from muck. Uh, they, they are created through alchemy and they are the servant race. They are the janitors. Uh, they're the ones who go and, you know, I've got to keep all the muck pipes working here and oh, well, I'm the waiter. I need to serve the hors d'oeuvres at the countess's uh, banquets and so on and so forth. Uh, they are very much expected to be seen and not heard. Many of the highest, uh, you know, snood, snootiest vampire, I mean, we literally have a card that's called Alita Snob. That is a lot of the Venthyr. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very much that, oh, dredges this. So I feel like disgusting. Morose should be there. Remember Morose? <laughs> yeah. From mm -hmm. Medivh's, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty Yeah, cool. one, one night. night cares, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dredgers, uh, many Venthyr have the approach that dredgers should be, uh, 
neither heard nor seen. They they should do their job. And frankly, it's really stepping out of line for them to even ask to be recognized for their work or anything. You know, I mean, it's yeah, uh, they they get the the short end of the stick uh, from a lot of end here. Um, but th- there's another type as well uh, called the biggins. Uh, biggins are essentially dredgers that you, you, basically how you make a biggin is you have uh, a bunch of magic muck and you throw in a lot of dredgers, you throw in some special magic binding stone and they just all merge into this one big brute uh, who, you know, they're, they're not the smartest, of course. It's the typical, you know, um, dumb oaf type of uh, position. But, you know, they, they can do a lot of the heavy lifting and all that sort of thing. Uh, so that's why, you know, I mean, uh, for Buffet Biggin, I mean, just look at his expression. That That's not really intelligence in that face there. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, so, how, so, so the muck pools then, that's how these are created? Yes. Uh, they're all, yeah, they're all made out of magical mud, uh, infused with anima, of course. And, uh, basically, yeah, so, like, that's how initial dredgers are made. You make a big end by just throwing in a bunch of dredgers, and, like, they all lose their individuality and just become this one new thing. Uh, in fact, uh, as a player, uh, when you, if you uh, choose to join uh, the Venthyr, because in Shadowlands there's, like, all four covenants and you choose one for the character to join, you get to create your own personal dredger butler uh, <laughs> who is, uh, like, uh, you know, follows you around and helps you out with some stuff. Um, and, like, you can collect little uh, outfits and hairstyles for them mm. and give them a little pony to ride and everything. And, yeah, basically you're a lot nicer to him than most dredgers uh, get treated. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that uh, the thing is that uh, I think one of the cool references from that uh, one uh, shaman card of the dredger is, you know, uh, throwing the stuff in the muck there. Yeah, uh, crud caretaker. Yeah. Um, Basically, if if a bunch of stuff gets in the muck pools, that's it creates these chaotic elementals from it, which is where that card effect comes from. It's like, you know, he's, he says, like, hey, it's all fun and game till the muck stops moving, because, like, if they aren't kept clean, it just starts randomly coming to life and animating itself and creating problems. That's amazing. So that that's some great flavor. And that's just in a common card right there. But they got some <laughs> great really on point lore and flavor for that which i really appreciate all right and and then moving on we are going to talk a little bit about some locations and the general atonement process for something so um as i said we already touched on a lot of this for the the basics in uh while going over the quarter harvesters and everything um but I uh, wanted to make sure we highlighted the location that this is connected to. So, uh, as I said, the Cathedral of Atonement is kind of where the uh, the accuser's base is. Uh, kind of her, the big thing with the process is make making them aware of their sins. Like, you know, bringing them to the light, finally getting them to admit that, okay, yes, I did that, and that thing was wrong. Like, that's... That's the first big step to it all. Uh, anima extraction is uh, one of the keys to it. That's partially, you know, it's the the keeping everything running there uh, because the anima is literally fuel, and also um, because it's it's the relieving of the uh, of the burden of the sins. Because remember, anima is made from all your life experiences and stuff. And so people who have built up, you know, a lot of pride, a lot of avarice, a lot of desire, whatever it is, they have a lot of access that can be siphoned off there. Uh, so it's it's all a part of the process. The, the details of exactly how and why that works are kind of a little murky, but it looks really cool. Uh, and apparently it does the job. So that's uh, that's basically the purpose of the Cathedral of Atonement there. And Repent! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but now we get to talk about Sin Stones, which is a really cool aesthetic thing uh, with Reverend Dreth, I think, uh, because they, they're essentially, you know, they look like tombstones and everything, and uh, you go around with it strapped to your back and everything. So... When you get to Revendreth, 
you are uh, obligated to chisel out all of your uh, misdeeds on a stone that you then carry around everywhere. It's the, this record of everything that you have done. Um, and it's, uh, you know, one of the things that's, you know, a representation of what it is that you have to overcome. Uh, and the Sinstone Graveyard is actually where the stones of those who no longer need them are cast off. So it's not that there's actually people buried there. Oh. It's more like it's a graveyard for the stones themselves because they are no longer needed. Uh, because once you either become a Venthyr or uh, move on to another afterlife, it's not relevant. However, because a Venthyr's sin stone still exists, even though they have overcome their past as from when they were just a, a, a mortal soul... If you get a hold of that Sinstone, you can use that to gain control over the Venthyr by reading out their sins in like kind of some sort of uh, formal, uh, like uh, heraldic way uh, that it, it weakens them, brings down any natural defenses they have, and uh, allows them to be taken out even if they're very powerful. So yeah, uh, sin stones can be a Venthyr's greatest weakness if they uh, don't keep them closely guarded and their enemies get a hold of them. So even once they're cast off in in like yes. sin stone grave, like wow, okay. So why would you get rid of it at the graveyard if someone could use it against you? Like wow, okay, okay. Well, some uh, oftentimes it's they uh, they get uh, misplaced or uh, uh, the are stolen. Uh, stolen. By, uh, you know, people who want to get a a hold of you you know it, it's uh it wasn't really much of a problem until recently honestly uh with the revolution uh because beforehand you know people were you know pretty unified in the purpose uh no one knew what denathrius was up to um but then we also have the sin stones of those who have been cast into the maw the the ones of the unrepentant that were never uh done away with and those uh, are what create our rogue legendary card. Uh, <laughs> who is, uh, let's see. Halkius, uh, right? Halkius, yes. I, I don't know what, I have trouble trying to pronounce that for some reason. Uh, Halkius, yes. Uh, Halkius is basically a sinstone golem that is created from all the residual magic of the the powerful sinstones of the souls who were cast into the maw and they just naturally absorb anima that is around them and they can wreak a lot of havoc if they're not dealt with uh this one in particular is a dungeon boss uh, actually from the uh the halls of atonement dungeon uh, okay. So, like, before you go into the Cathedral of Atonement area, this is, like, a boss that you have to fight uh, outside of, uh, kind of in the courtyard area. Is this thing, like, huge? Because it looks like a cathedral. Um, It's kind of hard to tell from the Hearthstone art sometimes. Like, I don't know. Cause yeah. the, it's, you can... it's, maybe, it's, like, maybe as, ha as tall as a house or something. Oh, just uh, as tall but, as a building, you know? <laughs> well, for, for the height, it's, it's, it's like a person. It, it, well, heck. Goliath, uh, I think you know, like the, the biblical Goliath. You know, like you got you got a, a a very large person, like you know, maybe like a nine feet tall person. You know, pretty broad shouldered and all that. You know, probably would stretch up to the height of a single story house, but not as big and wide as a house itself. You okay, know? so we're not talking about the size of one of our like elemental lord type of thing no, right? like our... no no by no means are they that powerful i saw this like the artwork looks like it's a like a cathedral like with arms and legs <laughs> and mm -hmm. i was yeah. like yeah. oh my it, it's it's that whole aesthetic you know it's kind of what happens when you get a bunch of uh elaborate gravestone looking things that all merge together <laughs> gotcha okay all i right. can jump uh, taller than a house <laughs> Oh, because a house can't jump. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm that brings back so, so many memories. Getting started on, on your dad jokes early. I'm proud of you. <laughs> okay. What is the Ember Ward? I guess that's what we're moving into. Is that right? Yes. 
So this is where we get into uh, Brennethal's little revolution that ultimately failed. Um, because... Well, because he was using the power of his amulet, and he forgot that Zenathrius can see everything that happens with an amulet, so... Duh. <laughs> it's kind of like... Well, okay, like, you you guys are dads and or have a kid on the way. Um, a picture that, like, your kids left a walkie-talkie accidentally in your room. They have one in their room, and they're planning about how they're going to sneak out of the house or do something against the rules you've set as a parent. And they don't realize that you can hear everything that they are saying. <laughs> that is essentially what happened with Denathrius and Renathal. Well, it's, that's embarrassing. Yes, it honestly <laughs> is. <laughs> Very embarrassing for Renathal, unfortunately. And so, yeah, you know, he and the curator uh, got, got cast into the maw and you have to rescue them. Uh, and, you know, the, the user managed to get away, but she's very much on the run until you come along. And, um, yeah, it's uh, it just all worked really badly. The Ember Ward is actually what was originally uh, Renathal's home turf. It was the, the ward that he had uh, dominion over, and where the Nathrezine operated out. However, the Nathrezine had a little um, espionage issue that happened, uh, because it said that that's their goal. They're the ultimate infiltrators. And as we mentioned last week, that one of their big things was Nathrezine had them infiltrate the other cosmic races. Mm -hmm. uh, the Void, the Light, all of that. Well, uh, the Light uh, saw what, uh, they realized that they were being infiltrated, and in retaliation, they full-on assaulted the part of Revendreth that the Nathrezim operated out of. Uh, so they scorched the entire place with the holy magics of the Light, and... Uh, light shall burn you. <laughs> And because of that, or uh, connected to it, Venthyr are very susceptible to the light. Uh, you might say, the light, it burns. <laughs> uh, because, you know, it's reference to vampire type of things. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but in this case, it's not just light, it's, you know, the holy the. light here. Yes, right. the light, capital L, uh, the cosmic force of life and goodness and harmony in the universe, etc., etc. Um... And uh, so what happened is that this is essentially unlivable for Venthyr now. Um, and it became the place that Denathrius would send uh, the political dissonance uh, who were questioning his power. Uh, so he would exile them to the place where, you know, this horrible, you know, uh, light that, that burns them uh, is constantly everywhere, except they can manage to scrounge a bit of shade. And when that happens, they start to go mad, uh, which is why we have Theotar, the Mad Duke. He was an ally of Renathal who got exiled there, and... Uh, Thankfully, he, he didn't go completely all gone, because when they go completely all gone, uh, then that's where you get, like, the Ash Elementals and uh, the uh, the Crazed Wretches. The Crazed Wretch is what Event Theory eventually turns into if they are trapped in uh, the Ember Ward for long enough, and it is entirely irreversible. Once you're a wretch... You cannot regain your sanity. You cannot go back to being a full Venthyr. You're just a, a crazed, uh, you know, uh, being just like, you know, jumping around and trying to devour whatever anima you can and whatnot. Theotar, thankfully, uh, is not that far gone. Uh, but as I said, he, uh, he, he's, he's a noble. And um, you say he has that, that air of decadence about him and everything. It's like, the, the, actually, his his uh, voice line is a uh, quote from the Gator. He says that, you know, ma uh, insanity is no excuse for bad manners. Cause he's very much about, you know, <laughs> the proper etiquette at the tea party and stuff. That's like great. you literally have quests about, you know, arranging tea parties for him, that that's the type of uh, person that he is. Uh, 
And so, yeah, you know, he's he's an ally that you uh, uh, rescue and recruit and, you know, plays uh, a decent, uh, sizable role in the story. Uh, he is, as we mentioned uh, last week, that one of the things in uh, Shadowlands is the idea of a soul bind. Mm-hmm. That, uh, that's someone that you kind of merge your soul with, you share some power, it's very close, and it's a mechanic that for every covenant, there are three characters that you can do soul binding with. If you are in Bastion, one of those is Pelagos. Uh, but if you are in Revadreth, Theotar is actually one of the people that you can uh, merge a soul bind with. And um, actually, that this is uh, something I don't think it made to the full game, but uh, it was uh, in the testing, and I loved the idea of it, that one of the powers that you would get uh, is because he's all about, like, you know, the fancy parties and everything, is mm. that you would be able to change your uh, transmog, your the customization of your outfit appearance for free, when normally you have to pay gold for it, depending on you know what, oh, how cool. much you're changing it. So like that wasn't something that fully made it into the game. They probably considered yeah, everyone's just going to do that, uh, that to save the gold. But that's soul bind. That's similar to like the items that you get that are soul bound. Yeah, yeah. It's well. That, that it's kind it, of, except it's an individual. Yeah, but the, the yeah for yeah, it's so the same thing as it being an individual, your soul binded to right. Those items are soul very, bound to you. Mm-hmm, yes, it's a very personal connection type of thing. Yeah, and yeah, that's uh so that. But what ends up happening is that you uh manage to reclaim the Ember Ward and. Uh, actually set up operations there uh in shady areas of course uh and uh it becomes the headquarters for the court of harvesters to arrange their rebellion against sire denathrius as they work to collect all of the uh all of the amulets and uh or sorry medallions as they work to collect all the medallions and eventually uh raise enough power and allies to assault uh, Sire Denathrius himself in Castle Nathria. Uh, but we have uh, one other little thing to talk about before we have a break, uh, because when the Naru and the Light attacked the Ember Ward, there was uh, one who didn't make it back. Uh, basically, uh, this one... Uh, kind of fell down into pieces, was defeated in battle against the Nath Razim, and uh, was salvaged, shall we say, by Denathrius's forces, and held in the Sanguine Depth, which is like this super secret laboratory and dungeon where uh, all sorts of very unethical experiments are conducted by Denathrius and his forces. And so there's, you know, you trying to pull some of the uh, power uh, from the Naru in order to uh, torture enemies and whatnot, and, you know, try to gain control over it. And uh, our anima extractor card here is uh, the exact type of individual who inhabits the sanguine depths uh, and is the... Yeah, it's it's very painful. This is the sort of thing, like I said, where it's not just for the good of the souls. This is where it's like outright, the ones who go into the outright sadistic torture and just extracting anima because we want it and literally like burning up the souls and taking more than they can spare. Uh, it's, it's a very nasty place. Actually, this is something I forgot to uh, mention earlier in setting up the slides, but it's in the Sanguine Depths that uh actually where we encounter as a dungeon boss the uh demon hunter legendary uh the devourer uh so we talked about devourers last week yeah that's one this one like crixus the voracious is that right yeah yeah he's at he this this particular devourer is specifically a dungeon boss uh from the sanguine depths because it's where there's these huge anima stores that like i said they're being all hoarded away and so uh it's like you know very attracted to that uh like like locusts to you know a rich field of grain or whatnot and so you know it's just they're just trying to get in there and consume as much anima as they can and see that that little guy is in there or sorry that very, very big guy. 
And uh, then eventually you are able to retrieve the Naru uh, from the dungeon uh, where she is being experimented on and tortured and whatnot. And this is like, you know, discover like the big secret that Denathrius was uh, keeping down here. And uh, actually, um, because it's dangerous for her to be around Venthyr, she is given uh, jurisdiction over what's called the Dawn Keep in uh the ember wards mm -hmm. the the tower where the naru kind of first landed it's the most light saturated place so that's where she hangs out now that she has been rescued um and uh we're going to get back to her in a little bit <laughs> and speaking of plot twists <laughs> <laughs> well played uh it turns out that uh denathrius's big plot twist is that uh, all the anima that he has been hoarding, he uh, shunts it all down into the maw to uh, provide fuel for the jailer to eventually break out. Uh, so he has and all this huge anima power. And this is part of what is eventually... Uh, you know, motivating, you know, it's kind of the big exposure that, oh man, you know, more people need to flock around those cause. Like basically if we're going to take out the jailer, who is the big bad of the expansion, Denathrius has to go first because he is such a huge ally. He is extremely powerful. And, uh, basically this is where, uh, the very first raid of Shadowlands comes in Castle Nathria. Uh, and so a lot of our legendaries here are bosses from the Castle Nathria raid, and a lot of the locations are the places that we fight them in. So uh, we're just going to take a little tour here, because uh, first uh, we have, as our first legendary, a uh, Huntsman Altimor in the Kennels. And uh, this guy right here is essentially, well, it's uh, kind of self-explanatory, he is uh royal huntsman here uh he is uh in charge of making sure that his master has the finest beast should he ever choose to indulge in uh, hunts himself because as i mentioned that's uh, a whole thing that they have you know where they you know hunt down the uh souls of those who caused fear in order to invoke fear themselves and so this guy is you know like the the royal beast master he makes sure that uh they have uh, the finest gargons. And by the way, gargons are uh, not animals in like the truest sense. They are actually much like the Stone Legion. They are carved from stone and animated by anima, just like uh, the others. It's just that they're in a uh, bestial form, actually. Uh, they are described as being chiseled in the image of things that go bump in the night. Is this similar to what the Stone Rite was making or different? She made all this stuff, yeah. Right. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. I just checking and, like and they just call them gargons to to get around uh the uh copyright from gargoyles, right? Ah, uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, but actually a gargoyle cuz like the gorgons, right? We're known for, for, like if you take a look at now turning to stone, yep. Right, turn into stone. Uh, uh -huh. I know it's uh we have like uh Zola the Gorgon or whatever, but like gorgons mm -hmm. turn stuff into stone like Medusa and the whole yeah. The whole exactly. Zelda Gorg Gorgons, too. Mm, now I want the big, cheese. The big stone guys. <laughs> gotcha. Gargons all the cheese. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. All right. So, the kennels, that's just a location within the castle? Yeah, that's the name of the location that you have that boss fight in. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Very cool. All righty. And then, so, okay. So, the next one up is the, is this the warlock uh, legendary, Lady Dark Vane? Yes, uh, Lady uh, Inerva Darkvane, as her full name here, uh, she is uh, kind of kind of a, a dark scholar type of thing. She she seeks to unlock the animus mysteries, and she studied uh, studied under Donathrius and uh, learned insidious secrets to turn it against his enemies. Uh, she is capable of stripping anima from uh, invaders and uh, using it to shape a new dark future, according to her little uh, raid boss bio, actually. So, uh, yeah, she is another boss there uh, that you fight in the raid. And um, she's down in the big anima stores area, which is another place that would have probably made a really cool uh, location card, actually. Uh, so this is where there's basically these 
huge vats of the stored anima that's just been, you know, hoarded and siphoned and being used for Denathrius's, uh, you know, private enjoyment and uh, kept away from everybody else. And uh, yeah, she just, you know, kind of like p- can pull on all that anima and shape it to her will. Okay. And so that's kind of uh, leaning into her whole, like, you see, like, she she has a book there and everything. Uh, the Vile Library location is actually a Hearthstone exclusive creation, as is the Hedge Maze. So uh, those are ones that Hearthstone made up, but they very well could exist in Castle Nathria. It's an absolutely huge place. Who's to say we explored all of it in a raid? You know, we're, we're going there with the single goal of overthrowing the guy who owns the house. So, uh... Again, it's Hearthstone doing that very, eh, it can happen, and I like believing it does, so it's canon in my head. Hey, nice. All right, and so this next one we talked about a little bit last week, right, as one of our characters, but looks like we're going to get into it a little bit more now. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So we talked a bit about uh, the race of the brokers, but uh, not about this guy in particular. Uh, so this guy right here, uh, the Artificer Zymox. Uh, He is, as you see here, uh, the Reliquary Vault. Uh, This is an area of the castle uh, where Denathrius has a lot of his most precious and powerful artifacts kept. And uh, basically, this guy right here, this uh, broker, as I mentioned last time, they are very opportunistic. Uh, They are, like, as I I described before, goblins on steroids, Uh, just like the ultimate, you know, uh, they live in cartels. Uh, Part of their name is, you know, based on what cartel you are from. And uh, this guy basically sees that there's a lot of chaos going in Castle Nathria, and he decides... Hey, you know, while uh, everyone's all distracted, I think I'll just sneak into the reliquary vault here and uh, help myself and see what uh, some of this stuff does. Uh, He has no loyalty to Denathrius. He just uh, is exploiting the opportunity. Uh, It says that uh, according to his raid bio, he actually uh, has worked with Denathrius, but uh, he's mostly concerned with getting the better end of the deal. And uh, basically, his raid boss fight is all about him experimenting with the different relics around. Uh, so he's like, oh, what does this do? What is it? Oh, this rips reality apart. What do you know? And those are the mechanics that you have to work around in what order to know? defeat him. <laughs> he <laughs> actually nothing. returns what, what in, the, <laughs> in the last boss of the expansion um, where uh, you are in that uh, that origin of the Shadowlands, Zareth Mortis. And he's like, ooh, there's even more reality warping things here that I can use to become more powerful. And so he's actually, yeah, you fight him uh, as a raid boss in two different Shadowlands raids. But this is where you first meet him. Uh, he's Artificer one of the more troublemaking Zymox brokers. here, but wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's not actually like a demon hunter, right? This is... No. I mean, do they just no. put it in Demon Hunter because Demon Hunter needed some stuff, and so the relics That's are... That's what has the, happened with a lot of Demon Hunter cards, honestly. Um, mm. Demon Hunters proper are just the Illidari. They are the mm. the Night Elves and Blood Elves who look like Illidan. They have the horns, they have the eyes, they hunt with the glaives and all of that. Um, and then sometimes it stretches out, like for uh, Ashes of Outland, um, or for... Uh, for hey, just the expansion that we just had uh, with all the Naga, because uh, they had uh, the Lady Sethro, uh, who was actually a Naga ally of Illidan. So sometimes they're able to work that sort of thing in. But a lot of the time, Demon Hunters just are not relevant to many of the set themes that they are going for. So they just kind of set something in that is either related to its just purely mechanic wise that kind of makes sense with what they can do or i think part of it is to kind of just go for the whole general outcast theme what's the what's the outlier here like you had the quillbores back in uh barons and such and uh you know, like the the death knight quillbore is that that one legendary mm-hmm. and uh i think it's just kind of the the general thing uh demon hunter gets what doesn't fit anywhere else? Uh, when you don't have a demon hunter proper, you have an outcast of some sort. It's kind of the the best way that I can rationalize outcast. the flavor that goes Interesting. with. Interesting. Mm-hmm. 
So <laughs> it sounds and it, like it, WoW yeah. and mm. Wild Hearthstone have a lot in common and that demon hunters are kind of irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Burn. yes. Uh, demon hunters were relevant to uh, the story of Warcraft in the expansion they were introduced in, uh, Legion, and they haven't really had much special to do since. They're just kind of there helping out the Alliance or Horde or whatever world-ending threat is happening, but there's not very much demon hunter specific stuff or even really mm -hmm. demon hunter specific characters that are introduced much. So Hearthstone has to get creative when they want something with the class. Makes me wonder uh, what they're going to do if they ever introduce the other player classes like Monk and Death Knight as actual Hearthstone classes. Uh, are they going to be able to find enough ways to get creative? Or maybe they re they think 10 is good. We have enough trouble finding things to fit Demon Hunter. Maybe we're just going to stop there. I don't know where they're going to go with this, honestly. Yeah. It'll, yeah. It'll happen one day. Uh, but we're not finished yet right here. We still have a few more guys to talk about. Yeah, buddy. All right. So you guys know and love slash hate this fella right here. I know, at least from a card <laughs> perspective. So this guy's carrying a, a rather large... I. So it's, it's Kel'thas, but I saw the name of the card. It's called Sin Strider instead of Sun Strider. Mm -hmm. And then if you look mm -hmm. at the art, like... This dude is carrying a giant sinstone on his back. I mean, yes, it's a, a rather large sinstone there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's well, definitely Kelthos the Chained. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys remember we we've talked a bit about Kelthos's story and such. Uh, it didn't quite end well, did it? Uh, do you guys remember much, or would you like a little refresher? Previously ah. on Born to Be What? <laughs> right, magic. My people are addicted to it. Literally, uh -huh. that's the whole thing with the yeah. Blood Elves, is that they are addicted to the magic. Uh, and in order to find a source to sate that magic, uh, Kel'thas ended up joining forces with Illidan in Outland, yeah. uh, which is where we first met him in Ashes of Outland. And, um, but uh, Illidan was really focused on his own goals and didn't really get around to the whole actually providing Kel'thas with a thing that would help keep his people uh, from dying of magic deprivation. And so uh, Kel'thas decided to ally with the Demons of the Burning Legion instead and ended up becoming all fell corrupted and basically he's a whole on villain and he, you know, betrayed his people and is all... Just uh, had a complete turnaround uh, villain thing going on there. Um, and so being a prince an elven prince even just that and a super powerful mage there's already a lot of ego going on there uh mix it with everything he's done he's ending up in revendreth but uh yeah. it's not just his own sins that are the reason for that absolutely huge sin stone there because there's that one of the thing the raids bosses is called Sun King Salvation, where you're trying to rescue him because he is being loaded with other people's sins by Denathrius as a way of kind of like supercharging him, like with extra, you know, sin anima energy that Denathrius can harvest. <laughs> and uh, yes, actually, you uh, you managed to uh, rescue him and uh, recruit him, and he actually becomes an ally to the Court of Harvesters in your fight uh, against uh, Denathrius to collect all the medallions and whatnot. Um, he's a personal pet project of the Accuser who's trying to work to get him to actually repent and admit that, yeah, he wasn't entitled to everything, and he did actually make mistakes because he's too prideful to admit that anything that he did was wrong. It was everybody else's fault, of course. Um, and uh, actually, they consider that were Kalthas a bit further along down his path of uh, redemption, he could potentially actually fill one of those missing slots on the quarter harvesters that doesn't have someone to hold a medallion. He's not quite there yet, but uh, Renathal's kind of considering maybe someday if we don't have anyone yet. Um, you know, it's it's like 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 if if you want that promotion at work. And they're like, eh, well, you know, we don't think you're quite qualified yet, but 
if the position is still open uh, in X amount of time, then by all means, feel free to apply. Uh, it's uh, basically that situation going on with Kalthos there. And uh, the Sin Strider title is more just a, a pun with the Hearthstone card. He isn't actually known by that in WoW, but uh, it's oh, that's a good it's, play it's on fun. words. It's that's... yes. Yeah. I appreciate a play on words way too much to uh, consider that something bad. I watched Agreed. the I watched the order last night, the old uh, Keith yeah, Heath Ledger movie, and it's funny because you were talking about this like there's that whole thing about like the sin eater in that movie, and uh, it's like very on on theme or on point with this card. <laughs> very fun. There's also a sin eater in the Spider Man comics. Oh, well, how do you do? Okay, I, I've read a lot of of them, but not that far apparently but <laughs> hey that's cool um all right so kelthus sinstrider and then next up is a, another location the great hall yeah so this is one where uh the location is a card but the boss itself is not uh this is where you fight the council of blood and uh they're just basically a group of you know high-powered aristocrats who you know like cozying up to denathrius and he infuses them with power and you have to fight them to get to him and yada 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 but uh the fun thing about this fight that i thought you might want to know is that it utilizes like the the floor squares in the great hall that you essentially it's like a ball dance uh where you have to move in certain positions like you're dancing as part of raid mechanics uh -huh. they literally say things okay now you must boogie down spin uh, your partner and, around uh, around <laughs> that sort of thing essentially yes it's literally a part of the raid fight where they are making you a dance in the great hall uh otherwise you know yeah you get debuffs that are very powerful and probably die and wipe the raid and everything uh so that's not really a bunch of lore to talk about all this per se but it's a really fun thing that leans into the flavor of this great hall aspect so it's kind of i want to would let you know that nice i was mm -hmm. gonna say it's kind of funny i think with some of the locations they probably were like well we need one for each class what do we mm -hmm. what should we do for the paladin class like well fine. the great hall mm -hmm. why not <laughs> sounds great. and all of the classes have a very strong identity uh like through all the cards mm -hmm. about the the whole general area of the castle is located in, like, clearly in, like, the Druid is the Hedge Maze area and uh, all the nature stuff and the Forlock is a Vile Library. And those might be ones that they made up, but, uh, like, for example, with the Paladin cards, we have Stuart the Steward. It's, it's all, and there's the Sinful Sous Chef. And so the idea of this is the place where we dine and dance mm. is very baked into how they chose to portray the Paladin class in uh this particular set and uh the warlock is all about the sanguine deaths with the extraction of the anima and you, you can see that theme through just about all of them if you look closely enough through all the different class cards very cool all right we have a fun one next where i i'm really interested to hear about the living mm -hmm. blade here yeah yeah so this is the part where we get to the final fight against the nathrius himself as the end boss of the castle nathria raid nightcloak sanctum is the room in which we have that big showdown with him and it is a very long fight largely because there's a lot of mechanics where you're just fighting or trying to avoid getting hit by Remora, the Living Blade, who is basically this uh, sentient, uh, very bloodthirsty uh, sword who is kind of, you might say, like uh, the right-hand henchman of Denathrius in a way, except it's a sword uh, who is sentient. And, uh, well, uh, let me... Put it this way, uh, sh uh, let me read you a few of her lines. Um, uh, she says things like, uh, after you defeat him, Treacherous prince, I will skewer you, slice you, slash you, vivisect you, cut ribbons from you. And Prince Renathal yells, we've all heard quite enough from you. Uh, it's so like, she says things like that throughout the entire fight. Uh, and just like, you know, very obsessed with... Uh, you know, uh, with the, the slice and dice aspect. She revels in it. A very 
a very bloodthirsty sword. Right? Um, Wasn't it something like, you know, let me cut him to ribbons or something like that? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and in fact, uh, it is the part where uh, in, in Denathrius is um, where, where he's able to beat Renathal uh, before, after you free Renathal um, and you guys try another assault on Denathrius before the raid itself, but it fails uh, because Denathrius literally, that there's a whole cinematic of this if you want to look it up. Uh, he just unleashes Remora and she's just flying around in like a slash here, slash there, wounds him as he's charging towards Denathrius and eventually he's just like falling down on the ground because he's like so wounded and he's just slumped at Denathrius' feet and he's like this was your big final last stand. Pathetic. He just picks him up and watches, makes him watch as he releases all the anima and the ma and everything. Uh, and, but here in this fight, after all that, uh, what happens is that after we defeat Denathrius, uh, Ramara, the ever loyal servant, absorbs Denathrius's essence with the intention of flying down to the moss so the jailer can make him whole again, essentially undoing what we just did. Um, but uh, Renathal and his allies are able to capture Remora, and they actually imprison her in the Dawn Tower under the stewardship of the Naru there. So, because, remember... Denathrius isn't exempt from this whole the light it burns thing. So this is his prison. Uh, he is stuck inside his own sword, trapped inside the light, with the idea from Renathal that not only will this be contained, maybe after he suffers enough, he'll finally start to rem remember the purpose that he was meant to do. And basically, he has to go through a long period of repentance himself. However, it doesn't really stick. Because we have those Nathrazim again, those those pesky little Nathrazim uh, and Malganus returning and everything. Uh, because while Malganus uh, makes a bit of a scene and keeps uh, Renathal and the player distracted, um, other Nathrazim, remember how I said they can infiltrate just about anything uh, mm -hmm. and you never knew that there was a replacement? Yeah. Well, it turns out that they are infiltrated the guards who are watching over um, the sword and Denathrius's prison, and they're able to momentarily disable the Naru and grab the sword and vanish off to wherever. So this is the point where we are right now. Denathrius, he might be absorbed in his sword, but he is not dead. He is out there somewhere in the cosmos it's basically a guarantee he's going to be a returning villain at some point in uh the world of warcraft story moving forward we have no idea where he is what his ultimate plan is where he's going to strike but the whole thing with the nathrazim they uh they were initially exiled because of that whole business with uh the wrath of the naru and creating the ember ward and burning it and everything but that was all originally a part of the plan denathrius got them purposely exiled so that they could go out into the material world and then create the burning legion by becoming demons and influencing sargeras to fall and uh, go down the corrupt path and all of that stuff because it all ultimately fueled denathrius's plans and the jailer's plans and uh yeah so the remora right there that is where denathrius is as of this point in the story in the sword okay his in the sword yep so the nathrazim stole her with him in, in, inside and maybe he's escaped from her at this point we don't know the end question mark <laughs> so, so let me ask that what is your hot take on this mystery thing is that is it a big red herring is it a hearthstone exclusive storyline are they just having fun or who do you like i don't know what their long-term plan is like are well, they are they going to you know reveal the quote unquote killer or is it are we all just well, going to get Rick? The, the whole thing is that <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, if Rick Astley came out, <laughs> Denathrius is I believe what the, what they're doing here is Denathrius is faking his own death 
uh, in order to kind of draw out his enemies and either just play around with them or get an advantage over them or expose some dirty secret about them or something. Um, because for one thing, he's narrating his own, uh, you know, <laughs> intro here. It's like, oh no, I have been killed. Uh, one, that's a little sus in and of itself. But also, when you play the card, what does it say? It says, a toast to all of those who would try to kill me. It's like, he, that 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 has to be him, like, you know, coming back and everything. He's going to have to reveal, ha ha, I am not dead. I fooled you all. That's the story that I think that they are going with for this expansion. But I have the feeling that it's one of those things that the story will, you know, be fully continued and concluded in the mini set. That's what they like mm -hmm. to do. Um, yeah. So we'll see where it goes with that. And there, there's a lot of different characters that we could potentially see at some point. As I said, there's there's those members of the Court of Harvesters who aren't mm -hmm. cards yet. They could be interesting legendary minions uh, if, if they were to maybe focus on something like uh, the Ember Ward or uh, another part of Revendreth, or if they went into like the Mon, the Jailer connection, that's another way. Uh, th there's a few directions that this could honestly go, and I can't really say uh, with as much certainty as I've been able to for some past expect uh, expansions what I think the mini set is going to be. Is that there, there's just so much Shadowlands that could be Hearthstoned. We don't know where they're going. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. They we could see the Naru as a priest card, maybe. Although I, we've already got a couple of those. Maybe we don't need them. <laughs> they make good priests and paladin cards because both are about the yeah. light. So it shall burn <laughs> Denathrius at least. <laughs> And then, uh, so that's all of the, the big lore stuff for us to handle. Uh, we've covered pretty much all, all of the, uh, all of the uh, canon character legendaries who aren't uh, Hearthstone exclusive creations. Like, uh, we don't know what's going on with Rafam there, why he is in the Shadowlands. I'm sure that uh, Hearthstone has created some fun stories about all that. But there are some fun little reference cards that I wanted to talk about as well to uh, some activities or Easter eggs in Revendreth that I was happy to see became cards. So, um, one of my favorite things about Revendreth is this little mini game that you get to play if you are a member of the Venthyr, which is essentially a party managing simulator. It's called the Ember <laughs> Court. And the whole thing is that like you are uh, attempting to make diplomatic ties uh, with, across the Shadowlands. Uh, in order to, you know, build up your power in order to fix Revendreth. And how do Venthyr do that? By taking a page from the Countess's book, you throw just the best parties ever in order to make good relations with everybody. And yeah. uh, so uh, this guy, this guy right here, the Invitation Courier, he is a reference to uh, this uh, little small... Uh, Corgoyle guy, uh, who is named uh, Timet, I believe is how you pronounce it, who is initially the Sin Herald. Like, he's the one who, you know, read your Sin Stones and condemn you and stuff. But then uh, he, he is appointed as the Party Herald instead, and he's the <laughs> one who hands out the invitations and you can invite uh, people a... from all across the shadowlands and yeah it's this whole uh, uh simulator where like the different guests like different things like some of them like it to be a messy party some of them like a little danger others like it to be nice and secure uh some like having very formal attire others want like a, you know a rock and roll type of party and so it's all about you know inviting the right guests arranging the right entertainment making Making sure everyone is having a good time at the party. It's, it's a whole mini game that you can only play if you are uh, Revendreth uh, Covenant aligned in World of Warcraft. It was one of my favorite things to do during the expansion period. Just made help me live out my uh, my party hosting uh, fantasies. Uh, <laughs> what a job change, right? That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, the party herald is here. <laughs> Well, and the, and the, to go from the the like the big bad uh, thing to now the party herald, that's pretty fun. Yes, that's great. <laughs> and it's actually also a uh, connection with uh, the 
other uh the next one there the party favor totem because uh one of the thing as the the rewards that you get uh, for successfully making your guests happy is you get uh, special little, you know, uh, tributes or goodie bags, you know, party favor type of things that they leave behind. So it's not actually a totem. The totem is just for shaman uh, mechanic related things in Hearthstone. But, uh, you know, the, the whole idea of like the party favor and everything is a thing uh, as the the Ember Court mini game there, and I just get a a huge kick that like this is a thing that uh, they decided to include because it's it's one of the best parts of it in my opinion. Um, we also have uh, two other uh, reference cards here. Uh, one of them, Blanche, uh or Sin Runner. Uh, you can tell in the uh, the. Flavor text, it makes reference to that its name is Blanche. And uh, this is actually a rare mount uh, that uh, people can try to get in Warcraft in Revendreth. Uh, I personally took a long time for me to get this one, but I really wanted it because it was really cool. And uh, it's called Blanche the Sin Runner. Eh, that's the name of the card, Sin Runner. And right. uh, it's one of those, you know, you have to camp in the right spot waiting for it to spawn, which it only does like every like five hours or something. And uh, then, you know, you have to get in a group and be able to, uh, you know, uh, do the right things. You actually don't fight her. What you need to do is to uh, help take care of her. So first, yeah, like, yeah, you need to find like some horseshoes for her and, and feed her apples and brush her hair until like, <laughs> you know, she uh, she trusts you and you're her friend and everything. She's actually uh, a horse from an earlier expansion in World of Warcraft. You can see Blanche the horse in a uh, an Eastern Kingdom's alliance zone called uh, Red Ridge. And uh, she's just a horse pulling a cart and everything. And uh, there's references like, she seemed like such a mild-mannered horse. What, uh, what could she have done to have ended up in Revendreth? You know, like, we don't know what, uh, what sins this horse committed, but... Uh, she looks yeah. like she's made out of, like, pure anima, too. <laughs> Essentially, yes. <laughs> like, Yeah, that's it's just a really cool reference, and I'm glad they made a card about it. And then our yeah. last one here is uh, actually a special ability um, for all classes, um, but they decided to make it a rogue card called Door of Shadows. So anytime you uh, join one of the four covenants, uh, you get like a special ability that's like a class spell. And we talked about those last time uh, because they made cards mm -hmm. for uh, each of the classes with a special covenant class spell. But there's also just a, a special general covenant ability that everybody gets. Uh, Sheep, remember how I mentioned that if you join Bastion, you get your own personal steward? Yes. Uh, that's the event, that's the ability that you have yes. if you join oh, Bastion. Cool. And if you join Ravendreth, you get an ability called Door of Shadows, which essentially allows you to teleport anywhere. Uh, basically, you know, you uh, if there's a, like a high ledge that you can't jump to, you just, you know, move over and you kind of disappear in this thing of anima and uh, peer up on the ledge where you were aiming. And so Door of Shadows is a, a specific Revendreth exclusive ability that anybody can use that makes getting around a lot more easy and fun. Uh, so, oh. yeah, that's that's the last of our little uh, references and Easter eggs. But uh, I nice. thought they th they were worthy of bringing some attention to. Very cool. It's always fun when there's like the inside jokes or the things that like are, you know, are there, but that you wouldn't know unless you're you know, played the game. And and for the bulk of people who just play Hearthstone casually and not World of Warcraft to play these cards and stuff. And that's fun. But it's a nice little nod to. The, uh, the, the folks who play WoW or know the stories behind, and so it's neat to see these inclusions. And again, my it's mind is blown, like, why I always try to include the, the WoW art with the Hearthstone cards is that when you compare them, they look so similar. They've really mm -hmm. done a wonderful job, as always, of trying to get, to get the artwork to, to match. With a Hearthstone twist, too, right? Like, yeah. Because you see it in, in the 3D world that WoW is, and then we see it in the, the nice style that Hearthstone does. So it's, like, similar, but with that tiny little twist that Hearthstone likes to put on things, turning things maybe even cuter, 
<laughs> usually cuter or <laughs> a little scarier. Or whatever. <laughs> so I think, yeah, it's super cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing all the stories with us. I'd love to see them all, hear about them, and, and you know, what a neat thing. I'm really curious to see where they go with the mini set and see how mm -hmm. things connect and, and what they choose to do with it. And they have a really unique um, way of doing things with Hearthstone where sometimes it's, you know, it's very WoW lore dependent and sometimes they choose to do their own thing and sometimes it's somewhere in between. Like, we've seen them retcon a few things in order to, like make everything work together and like it doesn't really matter it's just all fun and so yeah I, I i'm enjoying it and i'm very curious to see what will happen like they've really pushed this whole murder mystery thing and mm -hmm. as they've left things off it's like nobody really knows what happened and so i'm i'm curious to see like they can't just leave it on a cliffhanger right i mean they have to tell right. us something so there's still the mini set. We shall see. I, I suspect that that's where they will go with it is, is kind of the continuation of this whodunit. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>